In this video, I'm going to show you some ways of pivoting text data and another nifty technique. So this is the questionnaire that I've got. It's really simple. There are just two questions. There's are you male, female, and I don't know with the question key sex and how old are you, young and old um, with the question key age. So it's a really simple questionnaire. Um, and I've asked this questionnaire to 19 people and now I want to look at the data. So here's my Excel file. So the first thing I want to do when I've got my Excel file is rename this page. Um, I prefix input data with an I so that it makes it easier to navigate if you have multiple pages um, of inputs. And the other thing that's useful to do is all the way along the bottom here, is to put an X. That will make it easier to navigate up and down through your file. So let's see what we can do with pivot tables. Insert pivot table. OK, and what I'm going to want is the participant private ID over here. And what I really want to be able to do is put the question key along here. And in fact, I'm probably only interested in all of those. And what I want to be able to do is to put the response here. But Pivot tables don't allow you to pivot text data. Um, they can show you the count of the response, which is useful. I can see that I've got complete, complete data here, but it can't show me what the actual response is. So, what else can I do? Let me copy this to the end here. So let's have a look at a different way of looking at the data. This is what's easy. What I can do is move this question key over to here where I can select uh, a specific one. So I could select age, for instance. And then what I can do, instead of showing the count of response over here, I can move it here. And now I've got the participant ID and their response, the participant ID and their response. So this is still not great, I just need to fix the layout a little bit. So I go up to here to design and I want to change the report layout. I want to repeat all items and I want to show in tabular form. And then the final thing I want to do is get rid of these subtotals. And so now what I have is for each of my participants, I have their response to this question about age and I also have their response I click here to this question about sex um, and it's not because this is a small data set it's not a massive burden to paste that over there like that and then change this to age paste this across two it will do them in the same order um, like that and that and that's fine um, but that would be a faff if you had lots of different questions in your questionnaire and also if you had some questions for which an answer was not required then they wouldn't be neither the participant number nor the response would be in this table and that would get very annoying. So let's look at a different um, option that you can go for. So this option um, looks at what is possible just using some simple functions uh, and formulae to see if we can get to what we really want to achieve. So the first thing we want to do is prepare this data. So I've got the participant private ID. So the first thing I'm going to do is put that over here. And I'm going to go here to data and click on this button, which is remove duplicates. I'm going to remove all the duplicates in this list, which brings me down to 19 uh, participants and this other unique value, this X at the bottom. 
And then after that, I want to do the same for the question key here. So I'll take a copy of this too, put that over here. Again, paste the values and remove duplicates. And then the final trick that we want to do here is copy these and go home, paste special and transpose this. And that gives us those answers along the top. So this is setting up our, um, our structure of the pivot table similar to here with the participant ID down here and the question key along the top. Now we need to find a way of looking up the answer to the question key begin question for this participant 128981. We need to identify that uniquely in our data. This is where this becomes easier with questionnaire data because there's always a unique answer to the questions. So we just need to add one column into our data set. So I'm going to insert a column here. And this is going to be called a participant by question key. And I'm going to make this a concatenation of the participant ID, an underscore, and the question key. And then I'll copy that all the way down to the bottom. Uh, the shortcut keys for that are, let me just go through that again because that's a nifty trick. You do control shift and go and press the down arrow. Then you let go of the control key and press the up arrow. And then you press control D for control down and it copies the formula down. So now I've got my unique key, I can go back over here and use that. So what I want to do is use index and match together to look up those unique values. So first of all, let's build it from the inside first because it's easier. I want to match the concatenation of the participant private ID and I want to lock this onto column A and the question key and I want to lock this onto row one. So I want to match that in the list that I created here and I want to match it exactly because I know there's only I know there's only one reference for each of those. They, each one is unique. And now if I copy that down and across, you'll see here are the answers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on, uh, which marries what I'm expecting in the data. Here's question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are all of the answers. And now I want to index the answer out based on that. So I can do this, index, and I want that answer. that, all of this. So here are all my answers. So this is my answer to the sex and the age question. And I've also got how long it took each person to complete the questionnaire. And that's it. That is how you can create the same effect as being able to pivot um, text data from a questionnaire. And if you had a much larger data set with many, many more questions and hundreds of participants, the same approach would still be possible and it would take just about as long to do because Excel was doing all the heavy lifting of removing duplicates and then it's just a question of extending the formulae.